Welcome back to GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler. This is video number 11. This is the third and final part of building or constructing the fuselage. My objective in this video is to complete the basic fuselage shape. Hi, my name is Milton Shoup, and uh, we're, we're into constructing uh, real geometry now. So uh, you may recall the last two videos, we started with... Uh, the three view cross sections we used the create panel up here to the top right um, using shapes and splines in the circle tool to draw the fuselage cross sections A through H uh, <clears throat> over those uh, cross section drawings to provide the shapes we need at these critical points along the fuselage and then we uh, subsequently added, uh, after setting the pivots, etc., and positioning <coughs> those cross sections on the y-axis along the long longitudinal axis here. We then we uh, added cross section and surface modifiers to create the shape that we have here, which is pretty darn nice, nice and smooth. A lot of cross sections and may recall when uh, we finished the last video we had a few more cross sections than, than this but I took the opportunity after that video to skinny down some of these cross sections because it's kind of a time consuming process but I did save a few so I can show you how to do it and uh, we'll do that in a second what we want to do here is uh, Verify that the shape we have agrees with the shape drawn on the side view. And I've done a lot of that work already because it's kind of painstaking. But basically just using the scale tool and the non-uniform scale tool. Obviously we can't do that now because we're not uh, selected on a sub-object mode. <clears throat> but those two tools alone allowed me to take what was a straight section from here to here without any curves and to uh, reshape these cross sections to give us this nice fine curve along here. But it uh, takes a little time using those two tools and from the side view and from the top view to make sure we're, we're getting the shape that we desire for these sections here. And you can see we've got a nice curved section here in the back. And uh, what we're going to do now is construct the, the last two components of the fuselage. That would be the nose and the spinner part, which we're going to, it's easy to, to extrude the uh, fuselage to build this. Later we'll have to detach this because it's going to be rotated and animated. <coughs> but uh, this gives us a good way to kind of finish out the shape, and we know that we've got something good to start working with so let's go ahead and get started with that uh, essentially uh, I'm going to show you how I went through and decreased some of the cross sections it's a not a time-consuming process but it's one that you have to take time to do so we're going to select these two here which are of equal size and we're going to use the non-uniform scale which means you can only scale in one direction so with that and on the x-axis here we'll just click and pull and we're going to move those vertices together to eliminate some unneeded sections here once you have that then we want to weld those vertices together to make basically 56 down to 28 and we're going to use the weld function here and I've got a weld threshold that means anything eight thousandths of a millimeter or closer will be welded together. So we're going to weld that. If you saw that, it did it. Let's just go up and make sure that we now have 28 instead of 56 vertices, and we do. So that's essentially the way you go through and eliminate these sections that you don't that are unwarranted, unneeded, and uh, just creates more overhead and more work if you got more than you need. In the uh, in the mesh. <clears throat> so with that done, we got a good shape all the way around here. What we need to do now is flesh out this nose. So let's jump right into that. 
we're going to zoom in here, region zoom. And what we're going to do, we have a poly on the front face of this, so we're going to select that poly and all the, uh, all the other ones around it use the Select and Do No Damage tool. <laughs> so we've selected that front poly and all these as well because we have ignore back facing off. So everything on the other side as well as the side we're looking at has been selected. If we hold down the Alt key, we'll deselect these because we don't want to impact them. So all we have selected now is that front poly. So let's go back to the left here. Zoom back in with the E key. And what we're going to do now is extrude this out uh, several times, probably about ten times. And uh, you don't these extrudes, we're going to create new cross sections ever so often here. And as long as the curvature is fairly light, uh, we don't need them too close together, but as the, as the bend starts getting more drastic, more acute, then we need to have more cross sections to make sure we have a good, smooth, uh, round nose there. So let's go down to the extrude tool. And what that does basically is take a polygon that you've selected, and uh, once you select that, you can push or pull it. If you push it, push your mouse, left click, push it pushes it out away from the other mesh. If you pull it, it pulls it into the other mesh. So we're going to click and push. We're going to go out so far. And then we're going to keep repeating the process until we get to the end of the nose. As these curves start getting more acute, we're going to get closer together on these cross sections. So we can have a nice refined nose here be too far but I'm not trying to be too precise here because of limits on time so we're going to stop right there and we'll add that final little bit we'll click off extrude we'll do add that final little bit when we get done now what we're going to do is scale down each of these vertices to come into this curvature so we need the uniform scale because we want all things to come down same distance we're going to pull those down. You can't do all these at one time because the cross sections would also move left or right away from you or towards you if you're scaling down. We have to do one line at a time. We're just going to pull this down and I'm watching that upper edge there. You can only go to one edge here because uh, the drawings are sometimes you got a fatter line on one end than you do the other. So. You can only stay true to one master, right? That's what my wife says. Let's see. And we're just going to keep coming down here. Oops, a little fat on that region select. Keep coming down here. And eventually you get to the end. And all right in the hole here. This one's a little small. Just one like this, you may end up adjusting others. Yeah, just want to you can eyeball these things and just make sure you got a nice smooth transition down through there. Okay, now that we've got that done, we've got one more poly on the end we're going to add just to kind of close up. And we don't have, want a flat, a real flat nose, so we're going to come out. We're shrink that down about like that and that's going to smooth out beautifully so and speaking of smoothing uh, whenever you create new polys like this they are not automatically smooth so at this point we'll want to uh, go select all the polys edit select all and we're going to go down to the bottom of the command panel roll out here clear all and auto smooth and now what we have is a nice smooth fuselage object in the front. Let's turn off the grid. It kind of gets in the way sometimes when you don't need it. So you can see that's a nice smooth transition there. Okay, so let's go back and do this back end here where the spinner is. We're going to select do no harm. Pick that up. 
trying to uh, pick up the polys here on the back end. And then we're going to hold down the control key and deselect those that we don't want to impact. And then we're going to quickly, and I won't be so, uh, so careful this time, keep this moving. Quickly move this along. If I can just get on that, sometimes it's hard. We'll do that first section a little short. Oops. Got to be careful when you're selecting with these. You may deselect what you were working on and, and affect something you don't want to affect, but you can always undo. Very hard to get on that when you're looking at it from the side. So. Mouse very easy there. This is adding a bunch of polys. We haven't figured that out. Okay, we're done with that part. Now let's go in for the kill. Get in close and personal here. Move the polys down. Down right quick. I don't want to. Last time I overran my uh, file size and uh, it would not save it, and therefore I'm doing it again. Uh, but it's better than the very first two tutorials I did. I did each one of them eight times before I could get a final one. Uh, it's just a matter of perseverance. Spent a lot of time getting ready for these tutorials. So I'm not wasting your time. All right, so we have the basic shape. It's I wouldn't call it beautiful, but uh, you know it's not too bad. It's just kind of in the middle. You know, you want to be picky with these curves, not that they're necessarily necessarily be picked up in the sim, but. Uh, these things are usually, oh, I forgot, we need to uh, smooth, select all the polys, go down and clear, and all the smooth. Now we're good. The bad boy is done. Now, now that we're done with this, and there's other things that we'll be doing to the fuselage, but that comes later. We want to get basic shapes in place. Uh, our next focus is going to be on the canopy. We should show you how to build this canopy. And uh, hopefully it'll go as well for me this time as it did the first time around. And uh, give you some sense about how you approach building a structure like that. And then cutting it into the fuselage and having a good looking object to uh, work with. And ultimately cutting in the windows and what have you. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. And uh, uh, we'll be back uh, in a bit next video to uh, talk about this canopy. All right. Uh, thanks guys for jumping in add some comments suggestions if you wish and uh, have a good day